Hi, Scott here from the Centre for Excellence's Modelling Systems team. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you a bit about hopping between different computers. So we do a lot of this in our scientific research, um, going on to the supercomputer or hopping off into the data analysis clusters. So I thought I might give you some tips to make that easier. So when you're connecting to, say, NCI supercomputer, generally well, the command you'll use is SSH. So SSH, then your username, and then at value.nci.org.au. And then you enter your password, and you're in. Um, that's a bit of a rigmarole if you're hopping back and forth a lot. So I thought what I'd show you today was SSH keys, which are a way of storing your passwords um, and not having to type them in every time. So to generate an SSH key, what you'll want to run is SSH keygen. Just like that. So it's creating a file called id underscore rsa. And we'll say overwrite just for this example. Enter a passphrase, so you should always have a passphrase with this. Uh, that means when if someone gets access to, to your computer, they can't just use the uh, SSH key and access anything you, you access. So we want to be a bit more secure than that. So we'll lock down our thing. So you can enter anything here. Um, a sentence is a good idea for a passphrase. It doesn't have to be like an eight character password. Um, there's an XKCD comic on passphrases if you read XKCD. So my passphrase is going to be that. And then you enter it again. And it's been saved. So you've got two, there's two files which make up your your SSH key. There's the private key, which stays on your computer. You never tell anyone else. And there's the public key, which you give to other computers so that they can recognize you. So it works through cryptography. So you use the private key to sign um, a packet, which is then un decoded by the public key to make sure that it's uh, correct. So we've generated our key. Now, what we're going to want to do is move that onto the supercomputer super or whatever computer you're trying to access. So we'll go SSH copy ID, and then we'll type in where we want to copy it to. So we want to copy it to me at value. And enter in your password for what will hopefully be the last time. Okay, so now let's try connecting to value. There we go. Um, so if you've got a desktop like Ubuntu, it'll generally save um, passphrases for you automatically. Um, if I go SSH agent dash K, so SSH agent is the thing that stores your passphrases. So I'll try doing that again and it doesn't recognize you. There we are. And this is get your passphrase now. Doesn't seem to be. There we go. So now it's asking for our passphrase. So that was just a bit of remnants of my testing just before. So now we've now instead of asking for your password like it was up here you can see it's asking for that keys passphrase so these can be different things if you want to be extra super secure so type in your passphrase here and there we are um, to make it say to make it save the passphrases like it was doing before what you want to do is run I'll just give you the bash command because I know bash better. SSH agent. Um, so this funny stuff, the eval dollar, Scott, dollar sign and then the brackets, 
is so that the output of SSH agent gets read in by the shell. So SSH agent, agent will output a few environment variables that need to be in your shell in order for you to, to properly work. Just like that. Um, if we go SSH agent dash K, we'll stop it. If we didn't put in the eval bit, what would pop up was something like that. And then you can just copy and paste it into the shell, does the same thing. So now that we've got the agent running, SSH add will load in the, will save the passphrases for all of your keys. So it's asking for a passphrase to be saved. So that's saved. And let's go to value once again. So SSH at user at value. And now nothing's asked for it. It remembered your passphrase. So, and then it used that passphrase to connect and you didn't need to type in a password. So let's log out of that. We still have all of this, however. So that's a lot to type every time, uh, which you probably don't want to do. So what we're going to do is make a shortcut to value in our SSH configuration. So let's go and edit the file tilde dot ssh slash config. So this is your SSH configuration. So here we have a shortcut. So this is saying that the name value is a shortcut to the host value.nci.org.au with user saw562. So if we SSH value, what it's doing is substituting in instant in um, the full path name and the user. So when it pops up, it'll be saw 562 at value. There we go. saw 562 at value. So that's some shortcuts. Um, you can also, in your .ssh config, if you often use X terminal, so if you're using graphical displays on the supercomputer, you can say instead of doing dash X at the SSH command, you can say forward X11 true. And it might be yes. We'll see. SSH value. Do, do, do. Sorry, the connection's being a little slow today. We should be there in any second. Any second, well, I don't want to edit this, so I'll just stop it. Oh, there we go. Um, to see all of the configuration options you can have, man is the manual and ssh config. So this gives you all, all of the different entries you can have in that configuration file. So host, um, what addresses, security, keys, that sort of thing. If we just search for x11. So forward x11, so it has to be yes to forward, so not true like I had in the script. So forward x11 yes will make sure that your any graphics, like if you're popping up um, NC view, stuff like that, that makes sure that they show up properly. So that's been a bit of an overview on how to use SSH. I uh, hope you've followed it along pretty well. And I'll see you next time.